Last year, right before the release of the Obsidian Flames Pokemon TCG set, I challenged myself to be the greatest Pokemon Master ever in the Pokemon TCG, a realm that I had never really ventured into before. And so I built a deck, I was playing um, Turbo Miraidon at the time, and I started going to locals and I started playing games, but I also challenged myself to potentially be a collector as well, or I wanted to complete the entire Pokemon Pokedex using Pokemon TCG cards, that is to collect over 1,000 different Pokemon so that I could have a complete collection of an entire Pokedex. Now, the first goal of being a competitive TCG player, I've done just okay with. Uh, recently, I top aided my first cup, uh, which I'm pretty proud of. And I've still got a ways to go when it comes to that, and I'll be doing some more competitive type stuff on my journey. But today, I've completed my collector's journey, and I'm going to be showing it off to you. You'll see some of it in the background as I've begin to show off the collection, but there's a whole story to go through as to how I was able to complete the entire Pokedex. But for this challenge, first things first, let's talk about the rules. So the rules of the challenge are relatively simple. Because I want the entire folder to be kind of consistent, we have to make sure that we follow the rules. The first one is all cards must be in English. Uh, the Japanese cards have a different card back, and I don't really like that as much. The second rule is sealed product, binders, mystery packs, trades with players is really the main way that you can you can acquire cards. I can't just go onto my favorite website, type in the entire Pokedex, and then buy every single card. That would be cheating. The goal is to try and collect and get involved and try and get one of everything. The second one is no rule box versions of cards. This is going to make things a little bit tricky, but for some cards, I want an evolutionary line to actually be able to evolve down the line instead of having something like Radiant Greninja, which does not evolve uh, from anything, or some of the uh, V or EX Pokemon that come in fully evolved and do not require an evolutionary line. The goal is to complete the Pokedex in a way that they are all relatively consistent. And this is going to come up later, but this actually made the challenge very difficult. For the last rule, if I get more than one copy of a card, the prettier one must go in. Now, this is Crow. Crow likes shiny things, and she's helped me out with a lot of other stuff on the channel before. But for this particular challenge, Crow is going to be the final say on which cards go into the binder and which do not. So the first thing we had to do was to pick out which binders we were going to get and I settled on these Ultimate Guard 480s because uh, two of them was going to cover the almost the greatest bulk of what we needed to fill in there and then the last one would just be the most latest set. Then after that we went through and labeled every set of pages so that we would know exactly which Pokedex number of all of the Pokemon going in would be and went through the collection that I had on hand from opening boosters in playing in the regular Thursday casual events to put into there to see just how much of the collection we had to get started. I should also mention something else kind of funny that did happen during this time. Uh, one of my friends posted that he was looking to get into the Pokemon TCG and play it very competitively, like I had started to do. But I had gotten really busy and wasn't able to start coming to events for a little while, so I offered to give him my entire collection of my standard playable cards so that he could go and play in all of these events. So a lot of the stuff that would have gone immediately into the binders for the Pokedex, I had given away so that he could start playing the game. But stick around because this investment comes back and pays dividends. Also during this time, I got really excited about the release of Paldean Face and bought myself two ETBs. And something cool that uh, my local game store was doing at the time was that they had a Lunar New Year, kind of a gift card lucky dip thing. Um, and because I had spent enough money to be eligible for this, I got a gift card that was actually for quite a large amount. I had really high rolled on it and then decided to go and raid their trade folder for a lot of the pretty things. I thought, I got this money buying Pokemon cards, therefore I should buy all of the pretty Pokemon cards. 
and I managed to walk away with quite a few things that I was really happy for. And with those put into the folder, next up, it was time to open some mystery boxes that I had gotten from Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> you probably shouldn't show people me having unsafe scissor practices. <laughs> I'm going to put a kids don't do this at home. So this was the first mystery repacks that I had gotten off Facebook Marketplace. This one in particular looks like someone that was trying to get rid of the cards that they were no longer playing with. And so we had a lot of stuff that was um, just about to rotate out of standard or just before that. And it was just packaged up in these snap lock bags uh, and shipped out to us. But there was quite a large number of cards in here which helped us get quite a bit of that percentage complete however because they were all from the same sorts of sets there was a lot of doubles of the same kinds of pokemon and so that it meant that we were going to have to start digging into different sets if we were going to find some of those hard to get pokemon When opening a lot of cards, the first thing we would do is try and sort them into the different generations, which would help us place them amongst their Pokedex spot, their Pokedex number, so that we could easily sort them into the folders. However, my knowledge of which Pokemon belong in which generation is only really good for generation one, generation three. Everything after that kind of all muddles together and doesn't go very well, but we try and organize them so that we can then put them into the folders. This is what I do. I don't know if we have any. I don't know if we have a Caterpie. No, I don't think so. Well, I'm looking anyway. This is another repack gotten from Facebook Marketplace. My idea in the beginning was if I was able to get these big repack bundles that people were selling for cheap, I would be able to get the basis for a lot of the collection and then I would go hunting for the rarer or harder to find things later and that did work to a certain extent but because a lot of the cards in these collections were relatively recent there was a lot of overlap and so we weren't able to get as much set complete as I would have liked however because there was so many cards in them we were able to get quite a bit this one in particular shown up in an Astral Radiance ETB that obviously the person selling do not want anymore. And then going through each collection, uh, we have a lot of nice uh, recent cards, a lot of single strike stuff, a lot of the uh, Sword and Shield era things. Uh, and then we were able to get finally together up to so close to that 50% mark. And now it was time to really dig. I had my list of things that I was missing from my collection. And so I hopped on a train, went into my favorite local game store and started to flick through the long boxes, searching for anything that I could possibly need to help me complete this momentous task. And with a great haul, I managed to get up to 62%, but only now was it really starting to dawn on me on just how hard this was going to be to complete. And then, Pokemon's latest set, Temporal Forces, released. And we were having pre-release events. And I had never been to a pre-release event before for the Pokemon TCG. I had done it in the past for Magic the Gathering. But this was my first time. I was very excited. I got the Maridon uh, starter kit that came with Matang, 
I opened like five iron thorns and I did terribly. But while I was there, I was able to score a whole bunch of trades and also flick through their long boxes so that I could get a whole nother bunch of cards ready to go into the binder. With 25% left to get, it was time to get serious. Instead of just using the notes app on my phone, I was going to be downloading a tracking app. This one in particular that I found allowed me to sort between the Pokemon I had caught and the Pokemon I had not caught, which meant that I had an exact list of all the things I was going to need to get in order to complete the TCG Pokedex. And then, right as I was trying to figure out how I was going to get the last 25%, I got a message from an old friend. He was quitting the Pokemon TCG. He had had a good run of it, and he was ready to hang it up and return to being a Magic the Gathering player. Now, this meant that he was happy to give me back all of the collection that I had given to him at the time. Except, there was a lot more cards added from wins, from pack openings, from the player rewards packs for us to go through, as well as all the other things that I had beforehand that were staples or relevant or stuff like that, um, that it was time to sort through, have a look, and see if we can get all of that into the binder as well. So the first thing to go through was a big trade binder that had a lot of the more relevant cards when it came to playing in the constructed format. Uh, but there was a lot of cool stuff added there from the play rewards including some shiny energies and stuff And then after that there was a few half constructed decks that we went through and unsleeved and a few that had cards put in there backwards so that uh, Printed cards could go over the top and we discovered a whole bunch of other cool Pokemon in there as well that we did not necessarily have yet and then for the last and most exciting piece was a whole ETB filled with holographic Pokemon all just kind of put in there. I think the idea was to stop them from bending. Uh, and we sorted through that and found a whole bunch of really cool stuff that needed to get put into the binder. Alright, we've got another big stack to add to the Pokedex. I've got my lovely assistant here today. I'm just going to help me out with some stuff. But I think this is going to be about another 10, maybe 12% close to complete for the Pokedex. I'm excited about that. I look, that's page one. Sorry. We're, we're still missing some, some of the Gen 1 stars, but we've got some nice old stuff in there. Like, look at that Butterfree. Um, Firo. Nido King? No. Clefable? No. Wild Plume? Wild Plume? Okay. I'm just going to get it this way. Yeah. Oh, that's good. More space. Um, Venomoth? No. Dog Trio? No. I like his hand. Not yet. We're waiting on him to show up. Golem? No. I don't know what that <laughs> um, I think that's Krabby King where I just have a feeling. 85. No, this is, is Dodo or Dodrio. Oh, okay. No, this is King Wing. King Gla. Oh, I didn't mark off Wild Plume. Rookie Wild mistake. Plume. Uh, Hitmonlee is here. Okay, keep going. Getting close to Gen 1 complete. Mm. Look at this nice full page.
And then after going through all of that and sorting everything, we managed to come to a very exciting 82.5%. We were finally closing in on the final stretch. It was beginning to show that sorting through long boxes and the different folders that stores had was not yielding any success. And so in this time, we didn't have a lot of progress. I opened a bunch of boosters and then we opened a Temporal Fates booster box, got some cool hits from there. And then with some of these fresh new shiny cards, went on a big trading spree and managed to get a couple more things. but. I also reached out to the community, posted a bunch of things in the buy sell swap page, looking to try and narrow down on those last percents and was able to get another big bundle of cards to put away. But a spec spotted, Heroes Tape, hello. That's pretty good. It's so, it's, it's so It's neon. really eyeball hurting, I know. It's like, you, missed energy, you can't good. miss it. Can't miss it. Yeah. You know when it comes out. Yeah. Oh. Oh shit. Prime catcher. Back to back a spec hits. Hon. Prime catcher is like fifty bucks at the moment. Oh. Yeah, it's probably the most expensive card in the box. The uh, microphone's been off this entire time. That's amazing. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's really useful then. Swear to God, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> Uh, Beautifly is Dr. Silken. Yeah. Ludicolo we have as well. Just Ludicolo's is cursed. The Lumbra. Yeah, because it's from the, this... the live action um, Detective Pikachu. He's cursed. You keep moving your head I can't to be in front of me. figure out which direction <laughs> my head's supposed to go. It's really confusing. <laughs> anyway, it's cursed and I hate him. Yeah. Um, he deserves death. Yeah. Jail time. We should find a um bear scooter. Yeah. For it. That's right. Nice fish Pokemon. Okay, now we get the last hold on. I don't know what fish are in. Yeah, a lot of the like generic categories of stuff is really hard. Fish. Bird. Bird. Fish. Bird. Hard to keep separate. Okay. So we've got two. Okay. Uh, Roaring Moon is 1,005, so 1,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Roaring Moon. Iron Valiant is right after that. It's like three years in there. Yeah, um, she was 1,004. Um, what's that one? Yeah, Sandy yeah. Shanks. Sandy so Shocks is 989. Have you seen Fluttermane? I thought I got a Fluttermane. Uh, Alright. Are you ready to guess what percentage we're up to? 86. 90.5. Yes. So close. So nice. close. I think we'll be able to finish this really soon. As the list of cards needed dwindled, it was much easier to set up trades for specific cards that I needed to complete the set. So I headed back out, find a full of trades ready to get some more stuff to put away. All right, I've just got back from a big day of going through binders and boxes, and I think I have what's gonna be the last lot of the collection to complete, minus a few last little hard to get items, but I'm excited to go through and sort it and get it into the folder and see just how close to done we are.
Uh, then Golden goes 1000, which we fixed it last time. And that's it. Uh, everything mm. else numerically after this hasn't been released yet. So, what we're missing, again, okay, guess what percentage are up to? I don't like this game. Um, 97? 97.3%. I'm low. Yeah. We're so close to done. Very close. And so now is a great time to talk about what some of the hardest to find cards were. First of all, let's start with Alakazam. Alakazam, um, because of the lawsuit and Kadabra not being allowed to be printed for such a long time, meant that Alakazam was a card that wasn't printed very many times. More recently, Alakazam was printed as a, as a V and also Radiant Alakazam, but because of the no rule box Pokemon rule for the set, uh, it meant that there was only two different Alakazams to choose from. The base set Hollow Alakazam, which is really expensive and I didn't want to do that, and the one that I ended up finding. Next was Amora and Aurora. For some reason, this Pokemon just maybe wasn't too popular or wasn't really held onto by a lot of people, but it was only printed once or twice and was really difficult to actually get a hold of. I ended up finding somebody in Melbourne who was able to ship one out to me uh, after posting in the buy sell swap page with the last of the cards that I needed and was able to secure myself the Amora and Auroras. And then finally, Perhaps the most troublesome of them all is Eternatus. Eternatus is a card that doesn't have a non rule box printing. There's Radiant Eternatus, Eternatus V, and Eternatus V Max. Which means that for now, my collection is going to have an Eternatus V Max until a new card is printed. Alakazam, kind of a difficult one to get. There we go. And that over there is going to be Alakazam. So let's go ahead and get this out. There we go. Me putting him in there. All right, now we have one of the exciting last pieces of the collection left. If we have a look at the list here, there we go. Um, we've got two big ones that are about to tick up. This is the Amora Auroras package here, finally. I had to get this one shipped up from Melbourne. I found someone in a buy sell swap page that was just chilling with them in their, in their collection. And now we get to put them in the folder. Actually, I actually quite like these, they're pretty cool. Um, and look at this, they've got this cool tab that we pull it out with. So sweet. Genius. All right, so first one, Amara, I'm just like to do the honors. And then second one, Auroras. It is hard to make the camera focus on it, but I quite like it. It looks really nice uh, on the backdrop. Um, so, tick that off, tick that off. In these two packages, which have just shown up, we have the last cards needed to complete our TCG Pokedex. Because the Hisuian region Pokemon had not been printed that many times, they were really hard to get a hold of. So we've now got Weird Deer that we can put into the binder. And Dracovish. Um, Dracovish, Arcazolt, and etc. showed up in Vs and only had the one version, which was not a multi prize one. Hisuian Typhlosion. Again, Hisuian Pokemon not printed very often. I could have gotten a regular Typhlosion, but I really like the idea of having a Psychic Type one. 
Um, Nido King, no idea how I missed that one. It's literally in 151, which I think came out a couple months ago. Uh, Incineroar. Incineroar is in the latest set, but it's an EX, so it was a bit tougher to get. And two cannon. And so that marks the last of the cards needed to complete the Pokemon Pokedex in the trading card game. And so for the rest of the video, I will be slowly flicking through the different folders so that you can admire some of the different cool art on these different cards. There's a variety of sets, there's a variety of rarities, all these different things, which really is a treat to go through and have a look at. So sit back, relax, and let's vibe some of this cool Pokemon art.
Wait a minute. What the fuck? 